to cross the barren desert but you shall not die of thirst you shall wander far in safety you do not know the way you shall speak your words in foreign lands and I will understand you shall see the face of a God and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. My friends, on this beautiful Sunday, we recognize within this season of Lent the struggles that we are having with this pandemic. But as our song uh, invites us to remember, uh, we do not have anything to fear. Be not afraid. Indeed, the Lord is with us. Uh, we hear in our gospel today about how Jesus raises Lazarus from the dead. And there's that whole dialogue that he has with Lazarus' sister regarding the, the fear that she had. If only you had been here, Lord, my brother would not have died. And Jesus calms her fear with his presence, with his words. And so we know that our fears can be calmed through the word of God proclaimed and through his very presence in the Eucharist. And even though you are celebrating this mass remotely and celebrating a spiritual communion, the Lord is indeed with you. So do not be afraid. He is in your home and in your heart. As we prepare to celebrate these sacred mysteries, let us call to mind our sins and ask our Lord for pardon and peace. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. By your help we beseech you, Lord our God, may we walk eagerly in that same charity with which out of love for the world your Son handed himself over to death. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord God, O my people, I will open your graves and have you rise from them and bring you back to the land of Israel. Then you shall know that I am the Lord. When I open your graves and have you rise from them, O oh my people, I will put my spirit in you that you may live and I will settle you upon your land. Thus you shall know that I am the Lord. I have promised, and I will do it, says the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Lord, there 
From the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, those who are in the flesh cannot please God. But you are not in the flesh. On the contrary, you are in the Spirit. If only the Spirit of God dwells in you. Whoever does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to him. But if Christ is in you, although the body is dead because of sin, the spirit is alive because of righteousness. If the spirit of the one who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, the one who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies also through his spirit dwelling in you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. The sisters of Lazarus sent word to Jesus saying, Master, the one you love is ill. When Jesus heard this, he said, this illness is not to end in death, but is for the glory of God, that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. So when he heard that he was ill, he remained for two days in the place where he was. Then after this, he said to his disciples, let us go back to Judea. When Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went to meet him, but Mary sat at home. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that whatever you ask of God, God will give you. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise. Martha said, I know he will rise in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus told her, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, even if he dies, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, yes, Lord. I have come to believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, the one who is coming into the world. He became perturbed and deeply troubled and said, where have you laid him? They said to him, sir, come and see. And Jesus wept. So the Jews said, see how he loved him. But some of them said, could not the one who opened the eyes of the blind man have done something so that this man would not have died? So Jesus, perturbed again, came to the tomb. It was a cave and a stone lay across it. Jesus said, take away the stone. Martha, the dead man's sister, said to him, Lord, by now there will be a stench. He has been dead for four days. Jesus said to her, did I not tell you that if you believe, you will see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. And Jesus raised his eyes and said, Father, I thank you for hearing me. I know that you always hear me. But because of the crowd here, I have said this, that they may believe that you sent me. And when he had said this, he cried out in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, tied hand and foot with burial bands, and his face was wrapped in a cloth. So Jesus said to them, untie him and let him go. Now many of the Jews who had come to Mary and seen what he had done began to believe in him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. This is a very powerful message. It's a very powerful gospel. Last week, we had a chance to focus on water, which is a very powerful symbol of baptism. And today, our readings tend to focus on life, which is given to us through a breath, through a breath. We hear in that first reading how it is the Spirit of God who will r resurrect us, will give us uh, that breath, that necessary breath. Remember when Adam and Eve were created, when Adam was created from the dirt, from the dust, God molded him, but it wasn't enough to simply create him. He had to breathe into him, give him a breath, a breath of life. And then when through original sin, we found ourselves dying and uh, we wondered about that whole mystery of death and where was God going to be with us in this regard? God gives us the promise that there will be a day when we will receive that spirit of God through Christ Jesus who breathes upon us it isn't spelled out as we hear in the prophet, uh, from that prophet, but in reality, we come to know that, especially in our Easter season, where Jesus breathes upon the apostles and he says, receive the Holy Spirit. It is the breath that comes from the mouth of our God that gives us new life. 
And Jesus in the gospel today offers us a glimpse of what that new life might be like, where we will be raised from the dead. Now, Lazarus was just resuscitated. He wasn't, he wasn't raised from the dead in the sense that we will be raised when we die and lie in the grave. We will find ourselves in the kingdom of God in a mystical way. Uh, but the truth is that it is the spirit of God that gives us this life. That spirit of God that is breathed upon us, especially in the sacrament of confirmation. So as just as last week we focused on water, which is a symbol of our baptism, of being born again, what happens when a child is born? A child, in order for that child to continue to live, that child has to breathe. And so the beautiful sacrament of confirmation is a parallel to that first, first breath that we take. And when we breathe the breath of eternal life, breath of the Holy Spirit, we are sustained, but more than just sustained, we're animated as Christian people. When a baby takes a breath, that baby isn't just breathing. That baby will start to wiggle and maybe even cry. It shows that that baby is animated. And as Christian people, especially those of us who have been, uh, who have celebrated the sacrament of confirmation, we're reanimated. We're animated in a way that allows us to carry on the gospel and to Proclaim Jesus, who is the resurrection and the life. What a great joy that is. And those of you who are preparing for your sacraments of baptism and confirmation and Holy Eucharist, it's, it's a reminder to, we should be reminded of this reality that the sacraments of initiation, baptism and confirmation and Holy Eucharist are parallels to what happens to us when we're born. When we're born, we come from our mother's womb and into this new life, and then we receive that breath so that we can not only be sustained but animated, and then we need nourishment, we need food. And we understand, of course, the parallel sacrament for our necessary food in this life is the sacrament of the Eucharist. This is our Christian food. Jesus says, this is my body, this is my blood. He says, receive it. Do this in memory of me. Unless you eat of my body and drink of my blood, you have no life within you. These beautiful parallels, these beautiful sacraments parallel what has happened to us. And what a joyful gift that is, especially for those of you who are to receive or to celebrate those sacraments of initiation. But Lent is a time for us also to recall the gifts that we have already received and we might need to return to those gifts. In what way are you born again in Christ Jesus? In what way are you animated by the breath and the power of the Holy Spirit? In what way do you live and move and have your being through the Eucharist? What a great gift it is. And sometimes the season of Lent is necessary to call us back to the wonderful gifts and the grace that we receive from our God. So let us joyfully celebrate this Eucharist this Sunday. And again, even remotely as you're receiving a spiritual communion, trust and believe that as we receive this on your behalf in the most tangible way, that the Lord is truly with you. He is born in you and you are born in him. He animates you with the gift of eternal life, with the breath of eternal life and he feeds you with the bread of finest wheat. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God. 
begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Trusting in our heavenly Father who gives us life and breathes into us the power of the Spirit who animates us, we trust and believe that though we are here on earth, he continues to accompany us and he hears our prayers. We pray for our Holy Father, Pope Francis. We pray for Bishop Robert, and we pray for all bishops and priests who are celebrating mass on behalf of the world. We pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for ourselves, though we may find ourselves lonely at, at home, we may find ourselves not able to reach out to our brothers and sisters in a more tangible way, that we are still in communion, that we may recognize our fellowship and that we will always find ourselves joyfully uh, in relationship through Christ who binds us together. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for those who are sick. We pray for those who are dedicated to the care of the sick, particularly as we uh, consider this pandemic. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all who have died through the coronavirus, and we pray for all who have died for other through other causes, that they will find uh, the joy of the resurrected Christ in their lives. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. Loving God, in your mercy, we ask you to hear these prayers and to bless them through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. 
Hear us, almighty God, and having instilled in your servants the teachings of the Christian faith, graciously purify them by the working of this sacrifice through Christ our Lord, amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For as true man, he wept for Lazarus, his friend, and as eternal God raised him from the tomb, just as, taking pity on the human race, he leads us by sacred mysteries to new life. Through him, the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. Holy, 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 You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is a chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. You have set us free. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will, will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. 
May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, Robert, our Bishop, the order of bishops and all the clergy and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have called and summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. 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 At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. We who have been born again, we who have received the breath of the Holy Spirit, that breath of eternal life, now draw near to the table of the Lord to receive our Christian food. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, 
but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. We pray, almighty God, that we may always be counted among the members of Christ in whose body and blood we have communion, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Now I know that St. Patrick's Day has ended, but uh, it's within the month of March. Uh, St. Patrick's is also, or March is also the St. Patrick's month. So I'm going to offer you a blessing of St. Patrick, of the breastplate of St. Patrick for you and your household. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Christ as a light illumine and guide you. Christ as a shield overshadow and cover you. Christ be under you. Christ be over you. Christ be beside you on left hand and right. Christ be before you, behind you, about you. Christ this day be within and without you. Christ the lowly and the meek, Christ the all-powerful, be in the heart of each to whom you speak, in the mouth of each who speaks to you, in all who draw near to you, or see you, or hear you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. Give 
give him my heart, I give him my life, I give him my heart to you. How many times must he call my name? And so to me that he is God. And as a servant he calls to me. Serve to I will choose Christ, I will choose love, I choose to serve. I give him my heart, I give him my life, I give him my heart to you. I give my heart to you.